In this third of a three-part video series, we will review Jambridge Pro's general architecture and also demonstrate how to configure the Jambridge Pro runtime environment to use the product's TCP fast binary protocol. Well, as you now know, Jambridge Pro has a flexible architecture that allows the .NET and the Java code to run in the same process via shared memory on the same machine or in different processes on the same machine, or on different machines across a local area network, or finally, on different machines across the world. As a review, you can change your application's communication protocol by simply modifying your application's configuration file. This removes the need to touch existing source code and makes control very straightforward for future administrators who might not have access to your original code, but want the option of controlling the communication protocol. As a final note on architecture, be reminded that Jambridge Pro uses a proven proxy-based approach to interoperability. Because Jambridge Pro manages the bridging automatically and transparently, the proxy DLL generated by Jambridge Pro, or JAR depending on direction, allows you to securely interact with the .NET proxy classes just as if they were the underlying Java classes. In other words, no heavy web services layer to manage and you'll instantly have one-to-one -one object access to the underlying API you're bridging to. Next, let's revisit our project compiled in Tutorial 2 that's under our C temp folder. We'll begin the simple process of disabling shared memory in favor of enabling the TCP fast binary transport features. Note we're actually editing the configuration file that the project compiled and copied into our project's bin debug folder using Notepad to simulate a system administrator's control. This way the administrator doesn't need access to Visual Studio, but rather comments out features to disable and uncomments features to enable. Before we can rerun our application, we must start up a Java side process. This can be done a number of ways and is typically taken care of by a remote Java process that's already running. Imagine a backend JMS server, for example. Well, to simulate this type of client server environment, we've included a batch file in the log folder, log demo folder called startjava.bat. So let's go ahead and execute this example service and then we can rerun our client-side code build in tutorial 2 with our updated configuration attributes applied. With our Java server now running, we can now rerun our console application from a shortcut I've just created that points to the original executable in the bin debug folder. And here's our output in TCP fast binary mode from both our .NET and Java side logging features that have been integrated by Jambridge Pro. Well, this concludes tutorial three. Please be sure to explore our website where free 30-day evaluations can be downloaded. We also have many more code examples, white papers, and case studies that you'll have full access to. And also be sure to check out our knowledge base and support blog. Lastly, we're here to personally help you with your interoperability requirements and can be reached through our info or sales at jambridge.com email addresses. Well, thanks again for your interest. We look forward to working with you.